Welcome to the Tim Booker channel, where wisdom is shared. We wish you a pleasant listening experience. Today, the book we are interpreting for you is, The Time Management Solution. Is your morning like this? After the alarm goes off, you groggily hit snooze, thinking you'll sleep for just one more minute. Then, suddenly, twenty minutes later, you jolt awake, hastily get out of bed, rush to get ready, and stuff your phone and keys into your bag. You sprint to the subway station and grab a quick pastry from a street vendor on your way, planning to eat it at work. You barely make it in the nick of time. At your desk, you sigh in relief and start eating your now cold pastry. Of course, you know that waking up just half an hour earlier would eliminate this frantic rush. You also know that if you could wake up an hour earlier, you could go for a run downstairs, and with two extra hours, you could even read a book after your run and shower. Scientific research confirms that waking up early can set a positive tone for the day, increase energy levels, boost efficiency, and promote a positive mindset and good health. In 2017, the Nobel Prize in Medicine was awarded to three scientists who studied the body's biological clock genes. Their research showed that following the body's natural clock, by going to bed and waking up early, strengthens the immune system and reduces the risk of illness. Going against your body's natural rhythms increases the risk of various health issues. You understand the benefits of early rising, but you've made countless plans to wake up early, only to be defeated by the allure of the snooze button and the temptation to stay in bed. The author of this book, Damon Zaharides, is an efficiency and time management expert. He has developed a set of morning routines. He wakes up at 5 a.m. every day and efficiently completes every task. After following this routine for some time, he is full of energy, highly focused, and incredibly productive. He has built hundreds of websites, written a best-selling book, and manages a newsletter with thousands of subscribers. At the same time, he spends 50 to 60 hours a week working at his job. In this book, he shares his experiences and aims to help everyone wake up early, utilize their mornings effectively, achieve daily goals, and ultimately self-improve. The book consists of four chapters, which cover why you should wake up early, the steps to create morning routines, how to overcome challenges and setbacks, and case studies of successful individuals. Now, I will take you through the 10 steps the author outlines for creating morning routines, which can be further categorized into four stages, preparation, planning, execution, and review, the first stage is the preparation stage. The first step in the preparation stage is to set clear goals, which are the key to successfully waking up early. With goals in place, you'll have the internal drive to accomplish what you want without external pressure. So, the first step in creating morning routines is to think carefully about what goals you want to achieve during this early morning time. For example, if you have a fast-paced, high-stress job, you may aim to start your day with a calm mindset. That's a goal. Or perhaps you've been sitting in front of a computer for extended periods and wish to exercise in the morning. Another goal might be that you rarely have time to read and learn, so you want to use the early hours for gaining new knowledge. Take out a pen and paper and write down your goals. Once you've written down your goals, it's time for the second step in the preparation stage, identifying and eliminating obstacles. Any number of reasons can tempt us to stay in bed and hit the snooze button. It's crucial to identify these reasons so that you can take steps to prevent procrastination. Many people can't stick to their early rising plans due to feelings of fatigue. Even though they were determined the night before, when the alarm rings in the morning, they feel exceptionally tired. This overwhelming fatigue turns into a formidable resistance inside them, making staying in bed and sleeping seem more appealing than getting up and following their morning routine. So, many people choose to stay in bed, only to later feel guilty and attribute it to a lack of willpower. But the author believes that it's not a matter of willpower. You might manage to wake up early a couple of times through sheer willpower, but eventually, this deep-seated fatigue will defeat you. Moreover, even if you do manage to get up through willpower, you often end up feeling groggy and unproductive throughout the day. Therefore, the author advises focusing on the real reasons behind the fatigue. Are you getting enough sleep? Is the quality of your sleep high? What constitutes high-quality sleep? Scientists have conducted extensive research on this. Generally, during our sleep, the brain goes through four sleep stages. The first stage is a drowsy, light sleep stage, followed by an easily disrupted light sleep stage, then a deep sleep stage that's difficult to wake from, and finally, 
the rapid eye movement REM, stage, where brain activity is at its peak. People often dream during this stage, and it's easy to be awakened. For the brain to get the rest it needs, it must go through all these stages uninterrupted, constituting one complete sleep cycle, which typically lasts around 90 to 120 minutes. Adults go through several sleep cycles each night. Research has shown that interrupted sleep cycles can be worse than not sleeping at all. For example, REM sleep is the stage when your brain processes information and memories rapidly. If this stage is interrupted, you might have difficulty focusing the next day. So, first, you should ensure an adequate duration of sleep, allowing your brain to go through multiple sleep cycles. Most adults require 6 to 8 hours of sleep, which translates to 4 to 5 sleep cycles. If you plan to wake up at 6 a.m., it's best to go to bed around 10 p.m. the previous night. Secondly, you must ensure that sleep cycles are not interrupted. What situations might lead to interruptions? For instance, if you wake up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom or if there's a sudden change in room temperature, it's essential to minimize water intake before bedtime and ensure that doors and windows are closed. However, in reality, many people find themselves unable to sleep even though they've gone to bed at 10 p.m. Some may have consumed a cup of milk tea or coffee after dinner. Studies suggest that caffeine should be avoided at least 6 hours before sleep, as it can interfere with sleep. Milk tea, coffee, and tea all contain caffeine. Others might stay up late playing with electronic devices, scrolling through social media, watching short videos, or playing games, even if they went to bed at 10 p.m. They may still find themselves wide awake at 1 or 2 a.m. Therefore, the author recommends avoiding electronic devices before sleep, as this is crucial for ensuring early and restful sleep. So, how can you fall asleep quickly and smoothly? The author suggests going to bed at a fixed time every day to establish a biological clock. Exercising for at least half an hour before sleep can help you fall asleep faster. Meditating for 10 minutes before bed can also help relieve stress and promote quick sleep. If you're getting enough high-quality sleep but still wake up feeling stressed and dreading the day ahead, it's time to address your mental issues. Is work-related stress overwhelming you recently? Are work challenges too difficult to handle? Do you need to talk to your boss about the difficulties you're facing at work or consider seeing a therapist? In summary, having sufficient, high-quality nighttime sleep is a necessary condition for establishing a solid morning routine. If you sleep well, it becomes easier to execute and maintain your routine. If your sleep quality is poor, you'll keep delaying waking up. Some people sleep well but still struggle to get out of bed and tend to procrastinate. Regarding this, the author provides some clever tips, such as setting your alarm to your favorite music or placing your alarm clock farther away so you're compelled to get out of bed to turn it off. Additionally, waking up in bright light can make your body feel more energetic and waking up easier. If your room allows natural light in, you can leave the curtains open before bedtime to let the sunlight naturally shine on your bed. If the weather isn't favorable, or if sunlight doesn't easily reach your room, you can consider purchasing a light therapy alarm clock that gradually brightens as it goes off. With goals set and obstacles identified, you move on to the second stage, the planning stage. In the planning stage, you need to calculate the time required for each task to determine when you should wake up. The author, for instance, wakes up at 5 a.m. every day. But is it necessary for everyone to wake up at 5 a.m.? Of course not, the wake-up time should align with your specific circumstances. In essence, it's a process of working backward. For example, if you need to be at the office by 9 a.m. and your commute takes 50 minutes, you spend 20 minutes on breakfast, 30 minutes on grooming and bathroom tasks, totaling 100 minutes. So, you need to wake up by 7.20 a.m. If you want to add 30 minutes for exercise and 20 minutes for a shower, you should aim to wake up by 6.30 a.m. If you want to be more cautious and factor in time for unexpected delays like waiting for the elevator or subway, allocate an additional 15 minutes, and you should be up by 6.15 a.m. Determining your wake-up time is the third step in creating your morning routine. Once you've settled on your wake-up time, you proceed to the fourth step, creating a detailed activity list. For example, if your goal is to make your mornings less rushed, your detailed activity list might include making your bed, doing 20 minutes of yoga, and preparing your breakfast. If your goal is to learn, your list might involve reading a book, taking notes on your reading, and checking articles or reviews on your reading platform. 
If your goal is to improve your physical health, your list might include running three laps in your neighborhood, followed by a shower and a high-protein breakfast. Next, you should also list some habits that can disrupt your morning routine. These are behaviors you want to avoid in the morning. For instance, if you don't want to feel rushed in the morning, you should avoid browsing the news or checking social media. If you aim for better health, steer clear of high-sugar foods. If you want to enhance your focus, resist the urge to check your phone for new messages every few minutes. With your activity list in place, are you ready to take action? Not quite. The author suggests a fifth step, choosing activities that can significantly boost your energy. What does this mean? For instance, among the activities that help the author feel energized in the morning are washing his face with cold water and drinking a large glass of ice water. These activities fall into the category of energy-boosting activities. Another example is Timothy Ferris, a best-selling book author, who feels empowered by making his bed in the morning because it gives him a sense of control. Cheryl Baheld, an entrepreneur, energizes herself by listening to music as soon as she wakes up, it wakes up her brain. So, the author advises writing down activities that make you feel full of energy and incorporating them into your morning routine. Now, at this point, you can start designing your morning routine. When designing it for the first time, the author suggests starting with just a few simple activities. For instance, if you want to avoid rushing in the morning, your morning routine might include these activities, sit up when you hear the alarm, turn on the music, wash your face and brush your teeth, do a 5-minute stretching exercise, and have breakfast. Alternatively, if you want to exercise in the morning, your morning routine might include these activities, Sit up when you hear the alarm, wash your face with cold water, go downstairs for a run, come home for a shower, and have a high-protein breakfast. Now that the plan is in place, it's time for the execution phase, which is the third stage. How should you act? The author's advice is to start with the simplest plan, and this is the content of the sixth step in creating a morning routine. The author repeatedly emphasizes that trying to change too many habits at once can lead to failure. It's best to focus on one thing at a time. The most effective way to establish new habits is through gradual, incremental progress. For example, in the first week, your focus might primarily be on sitting up as soon as you hear the alarm. In the following week, you can work on washing your face with cold water. Then, you can concentrate on doing a 5-minute stretching exercise immediately after washing your face and brushing your teeth. Starting with the simplest plan and gradually adding elements may take more time to establish a complete routine, but it makes it easier to sustain. However, you might find it challenging to execute even when you've selected a few simple steps. This is where the author's seventh step comes in, simplifying the steps and reducing the difficulty of each activity. For example, if you aim to jog for half an hour every morning but struggle to maintain the habit, how can you reduce resistance and make it as easy as possible? The author suggests preparing in advance. You can sleep in your jogging outfit and place your running shoes by the bed so that you can start jogging immediately upon waking up, without the hassle of finding your shoes or changing clothes. This preparation aims to simplify the activity and reduce the mental resistance, making it easier for you to succeed. Similarly, you can apply this principle to breakfast. If you plan to have breakfast at home every morning, how can you make this task simpler? The night before, you can place ingredients like eggs in the kitchen, have a clean frying pan on the stove, and set out plates and utensils on the table. The more meticulous your preparations are the night before, the easier the activities will be the next day. After smoothly completing each step, you'll reach the eighth step, forming a habit chain. The author places significant emphasis on habit chains, which are a series of activities that occur in a predetermined sequence. For example, when the alarm goes off, you get out of bed, then you proceed to the bathroom to brush your teeth, and after brushing your teeth, you head to the kitchen to drink a large glass of ice water. After drinking the water, you put on your shoes and go for a run, and so on. These activities follow a chain, and each activity triggers the next. Triggers are crucial for forming habit chains. What are triggers? It's when you perform one action, and it automatically triggers the next action without conscious thought. For instance, getting out of bed in the morning serves as a trigger for washing your face with cold water. You don't need to think about it, it naturally follows. So, habit chains aren't composed of random activities, they are comprised of a series of triggers. How can you implant triggers? The author suggests starting with existing habits. For example, if you already have the habit of brushing your teeth every morning, 
use that as a trigger to immediately sit at your desk and read a book. In this way, brushing your teeth becomes the trigger for reading. To summarize, use deeply ingrained habits to help establish new ones. This way, your brain can easily incorporate new activities into the habit chain. However, the author also emphasizes not expecting to string together multiple activities at once and expecting them to produce immediate results. For instance, trying to read for half an hour, listen to half an hour of news, and then do yoga for half an hour all at once would create too much resistance and likely lead to failure. If you attempt to combine new habits with old habits to form a mini habit chain, it becomes much easier to execute. For example, reading for half an hour after brushing your teeth or listening to English for half an hour after breakfast creates a mini habit chain. Combining these mini habit chains together forms a larger habit chain. Next, we move on to the ninth step. The author suggests writing down each action step, posting it on the fridge, by your bedside, or on your desk. Writing down the steps with pen and paper has a benefit, it helps you focus your attention on what you are writing. Scientific research has shown that the cognitive processes in the brain during writing are different from typing. The brain engages in a unique way during the act of writing, promoting deeper understanding and stronger memory. Additionally, recording each activity makes your goals clearer and serves as a reminder to carry them out daily. These steps create an automatic loop where you don't rely on willpower but rather let habits take over. So, the author recommends taking a piece of paper, dividing it into two columns. In the left column, list various activities in your daily life, and in the right column, write down the time required for each activity in minutes. This ensures that you can complete the entire set of shallow habits without rushing. With the preparation, planning, and execution phases completed, it's time for the fourth phase, review. The author advises doing a weekly review and adjustment. This is the tenth step in creating shallow habits. Life is constantly changing, perhaps your new boss requires you to attend a morning meeting 10 minutes earlier each day, or after a month of jogging, you want to try reading in the morning. Therefore, you must update your shallow habits to align with changes in your environment and goals. During the review and adjustment, the author suggests checking if your goals have changed. Did you switch from a health focus to a learning focus? If your goals have changed, the subsequent steps should change accordingly. If your goals remain the same, then consider whether there are more morning tasks or if there have been changes in your work hours and commuting time. All these factors indicate that your shallow habits need adjustments. Finally, the author emphasizes two points to dispel concerns for those creating and executing shallow habits. First, everyone can successfully create shallow habits. Some may feel that they are not morning people and can't possibly wake up early. However, the author believes that you shouldn't define yourself by your thoughts. A truth in life is that 90% attitude plus 10% performance equals success. Perhaps it's the mental suggestion you give yourself that is the key factor in believing you can't wake up early. You can redefine yourself as someone who enjoys waking up early and challenge that attitude to see if you can successfully change. Second, nobody is perfect, so don't be too hard on yourself. If you happen to miss a day, such as turning off the alarm and falling back asleep, it's perfectly fine. Start fresh the next day. If you find yourself consistently struggling to get up, return to step 2, identify the barriers to waking up early, and adjust your activity list accordingly. In summary, the main content of this book has been explained. Creating a set of shallow habits involves four phases, preparation, planning, execution, and review. In the preparation phase, set clear goals for waking up early, identify obstacles to early rising, whether it's insufficient sleep, excessive stress, or a habitual tendency to procrastinate in the morning. In the planning phase, calculate the time needed for morning activities, create a detailed activity list, and find energizing behaviors. In the execution phase, gradually build up habits, simplify activities, form habit chains, and write down your shallow habits on paper. In the review phase, conduct weekly summaries and adjustments to ensure that your shallow habits align with your work and life needs. In the book's conclusion, the author tells readers that their choices determine their lives. Whether you choose to repeatedly stay in bed or opt for early rising to enjoy the wonderful moments is entirely up to you. Whether you choose to waste your morning on your phone or gradually achieve your life goals depends entirely on you. Thank you for your support and attention. Please subscribe to the Tim Booker Channel audiobook channel.
Like and share it with your family and friends, as wisdom is worth spreading for a better future. Thank you, and goodbye.